yeah, I saw it, and now, now that I'm below 11,000, it updated. Now I got clouds everywhere. No, that Brino, you got Brino at 14,000, huh? I wouldn't be any lower than that. I've still got it. 3018. Thank you. I've still got 150 NMs to go. Man, I got a 70 knot headwind. I'm only doing 400 ground right now, man. It's taking forever. Bill, you're speeding. My winds are kind of been around. I had about a 70 and I had. What's that big river cross right there? What's is that the um? See another airplane coming at me. All right, if anyone's on approach for Innisbrook, I'm down to two one zero knots. In the Cause I don't know what Phil's doing. There's so many planes over here. It's like sharks in the water. At Did speed? anybody land yet? No. Yeah, I'm at 95, and I'm trying to stay behind. I'll up my speed a little bit. There's so many planes are going. Still, the 5,000 meters is now the uh, visibility is getting better there. Okay, so I might just hold and wait out for it. Yeah, just. He fills up with his speed. Greg, you on frequency? Localizer. The runway we're landing on. Oh, 
Whoever's behind me, only man will fight. Make sure I get this right. Hey, Ronnie, you listening? Ronnie Cummins? Oh, is he? Okay, he's behind me. I was just going to tell him that I was taking a little bit of a shortcut because there's nobody in front of me for a while. Well, I made it in, but boy, I had to dive and uh, everything was hanging. The How's visibil the visibility? The visibility is about uh, two miles or so. It's the vertical vis uh, visibility that's hard to pick up. At about two miles, but um, you know the haze is there. I mean, I was just about—I was getting mentally, I was ready to go around it. You know, I looked at the charts, I looked at this, and I said, "I'm not in the right position." And then, poof, out it popped, and I just dove for the runway. Breaking through the clouds here in a minute. Not easy approach. The elevation of this airport? Nineteen hundred feet. The Aerosoft scenery for this airport is wonderful. I was going to buy it, but I, I couldn't find it. Aerosoft has it, but it was for FS9, though. They is have that, it for FSX now. Is that approaching oh. Innsbruck? Is that what they call it? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it's really cool. Heck, I'm not sure. The default's is. pretty good. That runway is short, though. I mean, you better be at final approach speed. I'm there, but I'm I'm, I'm 1.7 miles out at 3,000. Going up to 2,300 feet. No ground visible yet. Whoa! I got it. That's what I said. Oh boy! Look at this approach. Exactly. What do you do? Words. Just ascend, um, hand fly it in from coming in on the runway? You can't see, but. Uh, Ooh, uh, left tire <laughs> busted. You just can't see, and like I said, it pops out at the last second and then you're diving. Alright, I gotta backtrack the runway. I'm not gonna stop in time. Did you fly the DME down? Yep. I just was you... so scared looking out the window, like all I could see was mountains around me and I couldn't I, I just wasn't sure and I'm second guessing myself instead of flying the instruments. Alright. Backtracking on runway eight now, so watch out. So what is it? Uh, one one point ten that's DME two five four. Yep. You just don't see it to the last second. Okay, that's definitely one of the roughest ones I've had to do. Yeah, I've got to do this again tomorrow. I mean, I, I just can't believe this. I did, I did this earlier and the weather was beautiful. Well, I normally yeah, come in the, the other way. When the weather's good, this is easy. Yeah, when you come from the north, like Munich and Frankfurt, it's, it's straight in, it's easy. But uh, having to do that circling stuff, boy, it took me out an area I, I wasn't prepared for. Alright, I'm clear of the runway. <laughs> I mean, I was way off. Jeez. 
dumb when they're real low. Well, that's what point. I kept saying. I said, I can't be that far off. To, uh, Greg, I can see you. Greg, you're, you're close. Climb up a little bit. Did you fly the hold, Phil? No, no, no. The airplane did an automatic left turn, or the FMC did the shortest way, and it did the left turn, and I came back to the, on that heading of 210. We see you, Greg. Uh, you're close. Close, buddy. Turn it. <laughs> I blew two left main tires. What are you flying? Passengers? Oh. Or three, I'm sorry, three left main tires. I went right to the end of the runway, right to the fence, just about. Got it easy. Well, go have a beer, Phil. The beer's good here. Yeah, yeah, das gut. Yeah, that's when you plead ignorance. You just don't look out the window. And go. Oh, the, the scenery would be awesome. Have they had several wrecks going into this airport, though? Mm, I don't know. No, it's pretty strict. Uh, it's just like Juno and and, uh, and Ketchikan. You you've got to be uh, a certain level of experience before you can even attempt the approaches. And technically, everybody was right. Uh, well, this might have this been below limits. Exactly. The minimums are very high. Hey, Phil, what are you doing? So in real life, this airport would be closed right now. They would have no in, no uh, no in downs. Right. So after you re after you finish your flight, then go back and read the write up, and then you'll appreciate all the fun we had tonight. Like I say, next week we're flying out of here to somewhere. The departure is fun out of here too. So. Alright, Phil, I'm going to pass you on the ground here. Yeah, just go ahead. I'm just look, watching the guys come in. Okay. I'm going to leave the space to my right open for the rag. Okay, I land. Ready to go, Greg. Yeah, good job, man. And flew it in. Yeah, so I don't know. That got rough, though. So we got a Well, I was trying to... I don't know how you can hand fly that in. I mean, I was trying to fly the instruments, and I was peeking out the window because I was so close to the mountains. And uh, and I just, I kept double-guessing myself. It's all GPS, Chuck. Yeah. My, G, my GPS is telling me... Um, what direction to fly, how far I am away. It's really not, and I was basically blind, so that worked. Ignorance is bliss, that's what works. But I knew the altitude, I had set the altimeter, so I knew it was 1840 something, whatever. So I knew, I just had to keep it above that. I had full flaps, 120 knots. Yeah. You know, forget the flap schedule and all that stuff. I just drop gear flaps and and fly a sucker in at 120 knots. See, that was the key thing there, approach speed, because the runway is small. Nothing down. Yeah, everybody else is flying it beautifully. I'm just, it's just a thing, this picture to see. A lot of parking here. Well, I'm 160 miles out. All right, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're plenty fine there. Yep. I definitely blew up the left. Hey, Greg, you blowing tires on? Nope. <laughs>
you're being honest that's the whole point i mean uh, oh. I, like I said, I went right to the very end. I mean, I I could almost say I touched the fence. I mean, I was. Oh, uh, I, I went to the end, but I, I had a circle. I mean, I had to turn it in so hard, brush that left me wow. here. Yeah, but that was a long run. It's a long runway. Does X does that X plane have automatic failures built in? What do you mean auto? No, we, you can defeat them. It's not default. Hit hard enough, it's down. Right. Oh yeah, it can definitely crash it, but uh, no, it doesn't have automatic failures. You have to engage those if you want them. You're stupid that, to do that. Pretty here for us. Or I should say random failures. I have random failures every 100 hours. See, I don't do that because I want to make a flight. I don't want to have the. That's ridiculous. I like to keep it on, I like to keep it on my toes though. Oh, gotta figure out what went wrong. Did you hear about the triple seven that had to land in Wales today as an emergency at Cardiff? Uh oh, what No, happened? I didn't mark. What That's British, British out, Airways. Left what Houston, I guess, last night. Had a, They didn't say what kind of failure it was. It said the plane landed without difficulty, but they had to make an emergency landing. Could have been oh, passenger, could have been anything then. But yeah, yeah I, as I get, once I get bored with straight flights, that's when I throw, like you say, click on emergencies. And uh, I had both engines go out over the Gulf of Mexico, and I tried to glide to shore, didn't make it. And, you know, you, in real life, you pull out the manuals, and you got to go through your checks. You, did you do this? Did you do this? Try to restart. It's... It really makes you work and think. Hey, Ronnie Cummins. Yeah, I know, and I'm right behind him. I'm ten miles behind him. Hey, Bruce, I'll uh, I'll call out what I'm doing here. You're about you're you're the next one behind me. I got to take care of my hub manager. Four, five, two. I don't know if he's going to make it. Here be. Beautiful landing. I'm 133 minutes away, 133 Chuck miles land. out. Chuck didn't land, no, that was Phil talking about somebody else landing. I'm just right now at RTT, and I'm going to go ahead and that overfly was, it and let... Uh, that was me, American 452. Yeah, I'm going to let Ronnie... Nice job, Tony. Out. Oh, man, I was, like, sweating it. I'm going to have to, like, pound a beer after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want y'all all to hold up your cards. When I, I'll be the last one in. <laughs> we, got the, we, we got the fire extinguishers up, Mark. Yeah, we'll fog the runway before you get there, Mark. Right. I might just right, land American do a belly landing just to suit you guys. All right, American 452, I cleared the runway. Yeah, I see it coming in, Tony. Nice job. I thought you were too high and I didn't think you were going to make it there and you were to the left, but you slowly corrected back nicely. Yeah, I was uh, adjusting my um, throttle and stuff too. I um, gunned it down pretty quick towards the end. 
Yeah. Look at these mountains around here. It's incredible. Oh, it is. You should see it on a VFR day. It's just beautiful. You should see it in real life. Who did it? And then Who when you see that life? departure. Well, I've been here in real life. But I didn't fly in. You're skiing. No. I was drinking and touristing with my wife and riding cable cars and shit like that. <laughs> I was escaping from the German cold. You are a traveler. I have traveled a lot. Some yeah. of it on some of it on purpose. Yeah, it's a great thing to retire, isn't it? Uh, I was doing that while I was working. That's the best part. Best four years of my life was uh, living in Germany. Saw oh, the yeah? Eagle's Nest. Saw Where the were Eagle's you living, Nest. Phil? I was in Baden Baden, um, just south of Ramstein, or yeah. south of Lark. Uh, I w I've been there. I, was I know where Baden Baden was. Swybrooken. Oh, yeah, it's Swybrooken, yeah. Crystal out of Czechoslovakia, uh, France. Nobody stopped there other than for Dijon mustard. Uh, I, I have a daughter. That, I have a daughter from those days in Germany. <laughs> How many daughters do you have? Two. One here, one there. No wonder you have so many guns. No, oh, my daughter <laughs> in Germany. She, she visits. That's lovely. No wonder I'm. Slow. <sighs> all right, guys, I'm on my descent. Here we um, go. We're all sitting here in popcorn and uh, waiting for you. For the drink. I'm just class. I'm just crossing Sumar and starting my descent down to fourteen thousand. Just crossing Breno in a few minutes. My nuts are is five six six coming in the opposite direction. You have nuts? You said you what? <laughs> uh, or am I nuts? Is five six six. He just landed. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Four twenty nine is way off. I don't know what he's gonna do. There he goes, he's correcting now. All right, we got all our de-icing on because we're going through clouds. We don't want to freeze up and crash. Did you have to die for the runway or were you... Oh. Oh, kid, okay. Ah. That one has the HUD. They fly the HUD. I'm in the new uh, livery. Back. Who's that? Greg's pushing back? Uh, no, I was just uh, backing up a little bit. It's a little too far forward. Um, there's some parking on the Piaggio's if anyone needs to. aviation area. Hey, I need a flight out of here. Oh, it's just bad. Really for me, you know that. It's a good departure out of here. You can go to Munich, you can go to Frankfurt, you can go to Paris, London. 
Go to Oslo or Stockholm Cal or Copenhagen. California, Chicago. Ugh. Might go back state side. I don't moment. think there's any real long flights out of here. I don't want a long flight out here. I'm just guessing they don't go out real heavy. No, I don't. I, I agree with you. You'd have to get over to Zurich and then out. Right. Well, or even uh, Vienna, but yeah. not here. See, actually, uh, Chuck, this could have been good for a turboprop. Uh, you know, pick a place closer and uh, come in here on turboprop. Well, this was our turboprop departure point that night that we went from uh, most of you guys. In fact, all of you but me, I think, went from uh, Amsterdam to Milano Malpensa. Yeah. What do you want, Laporte? Flight? Question mark. You're well, muted. Okay, American Seven is leaving RTT. You got traffic. Yeah. Before they. You got traffic eight yeah. miles in front, Chuck. Well, well that's five, six miles top down. down or... top okay. Let's go to cruise altitude. Five or six miles is a long way. <laughs> yeah, it had like zero visibility, Chuck, when I came in. So uh, 121 must be behind uh, 7, and then I'm behind 121, huh? Well, you got 242 out there circling around to the east, or the, yeah, the west. Just coming over the mountain. Nicely done, these three guys are well spaced. Gonna, it looks like they're going to make it. Okay, American 7 is intercepting the localizer. 21 miles out. <laughs> 